Welcome to Slaying Excel Dragons video number 38. Hey, these are the videos that accompany the book. We are in chapter 6 covering data analysis. In this video, we get to talk about the subtotal feature. Hey, we're going to do uh, subtotals to add a uh, sales for one field. We'll see how to copy and paste a subtotal. We'll see a great, great, great keyboard shortcut for select visible sales only. We will see how to do average sales for one field using subtotal. We'll see how to the ever important remove subtotals. We'll count words in one field. And finally, we'll see how to do subtotals on two fields using the ever important replace current subtotals and having it unchecked to do two subtotals. We are in the Excel workbook, Excel is fun start. You can download this by clicking on the link below the video or getting it from the DVD. Hey, we're going to start on ST1 sheet. Here is our data set, as always with data analysis, proper data set. Whether it is an official Excel table, which we talked about earlier in the book, or table format structures. Field names in the first row, or the first row of the data set, and then records in subsequent rows. No blanks anywhere, at least no blank columns or rows. All right, subtotal. The most important thing we need to know before going to data and then up here outline and subtotal is you got to sort. If you run subtotals and say, hey, give me the subtotals for regions, it will try to give you uh, a subtotal for east, south, etc., exactly as the unsorted column sits. So you always want to sort first. Our goal is simply to, from this data set, get the total sales in each region. So I'm going to sort step number one. And when you're sorting, select one single cell and then click whatever you want, A to Z, Z to A. I'm going to click A to Z. Once that is sorted, we can easily do subtotals. I'm going to go up to subtotals. And before we do this, let's just scroll down here. What subtotal does is, and it Everything subtotal does is temporary because as soon as you click remove, it removes it all. It like alters the data set temporarily and then immediately brings it back to its original state. All right, notice there's a change in uh, the item in this column from east to midwest. Right at this change, it's going to insert a column. And then over below the uh, number columns, it's going to put some sort of calculation. We're going to tell it sum. All right, so that's what subtotal does. One cell selected, go up to subtotal. And here it is. This subtotal dialog box is awesome. The first at each change in is asking, where do you want us to insert that blank row and add the calculation? So I'm going to say region, because that's the column we uh, sorted. So it's really going to go all the way down here and find that first difference between east and whatever the next one is. And it will insert a row. That's what this option in the subtotals dialog box does. Next one is our 11 functions. Um, we're going to select sum. Finally, there is, well not finally, the, the third part is you got to tell it where you want the calculation. Now, sometimes when people are learning, they get confused between this and this. This just says where you want to insert, right? <laughs> Change in region. But now we got to say where the calculation is going to be done. I'm going to check both sales and cost of goods sold. These two here. Oh, we might as well do units, too, so it'll get a subtotal for all of those. Replace current subtotals. We don't have any, so we don't need to worry about that. Page breaks between groups. You could do that if the, our data set is going to be, uh, well, anyway, that would be nice, because then uh, the regions won't get mixed up. That's only for printing, though. And summary below data, if you do this, it would be above. I'm going to select below and click OK. Instantly, it adds over here something called an outline. Now, right now, it doesn't look like anything. But if you scroll down, there it is. It actually inserted a row, put east total, and put a bunch of railroad tracks up. No, no, no. Those are just column widths not wide enough. I'm going to highlight both columns and double click. And now it best fits that. Now, that's kind of useful, right? But what I'd really like is to see the total. So I'm going to use these outline buttons. Three shows all the data. Two shows just the subtotals. And one shows just the grand total. Now, you wouldn't ever just do grand total 
or it's not likely you would because usually we could do that with the sum function. I'm going to select leveled outline 2. There's our report. Now let's try and copy this and paste it because that's what people do. This is a temporary state. As soon as we say uh, turn off subtotals, the data set will immediately go back to its original state and all this will be removed. But so the point is we got this now let's copy. Notice the dancing ants are dancing around the outside edge. Now I'm going to go over to the sheet ST paste. I'm going to click in A1 and Control V. What? What is that? I don't see any subtotals. Oh, there they are. Well, that would that's terrible. What did it do when I copied? It copied all the hidden rows. Now I'm going to go back over to ST1. All of those rows are hidden. You can see right here 32, 57, 85, etc. So instead of copying and pasting, we got to have to add one extra step before we copy and paste. And that is to select the visible cells only. Now on the home ribbon, if I can even remember where it is, uh, find, select, go to special, and then we can select visible cells only. Uh, you can also hit the F5 key, that's go to, and then you have all your options. I'm going to click on special and then visible cells only. Or there's a keyboard shortcut. It is so awesome. As long as you have this highlighted, alt semicolon. Now you can't really see in the video, but you can kind of see the, the fact that just the rows that are visible are selected. Now when you control C, and by the way, you got to select visible cells before you copy and paste. So now we got the visible cells selected. Control C. Once you do Control C, you can really see what we're talking about. The dance and dance before we did this were going around just the outside, but now you can see they're going around just around the visible cells. Once that's copied, you click over on this sheet. Ooh, I forgot to delete it. I'm going to click up here and clear all. Alt E A A. Now I have to go back and copy again. Control C. When I clicked Escape, it got rid of the dance and dance. I go over to ST Paste. I click in Control Home, cell A1, and Control V. Now I can change the column widths. Double click. So that's really how subtotal is used. And most people that use subtotals, they uh, do whatever calculation subtotals copy. But before they copy, they visible cells only copy and paste. Now, let's go see how to change the calculation. Instead of sum, I want average. Now, how do I turn off the dancing ants? Escape. I'm going to go back up to subtotals and data here. If you do subtotals a lot, the keyboard shortcut I have memorized is from an earlier version, which would be D for data and B for subtotal, so Alt D B. We want to change the function, so I'm going to change it to average. And just like that, because replace current subtotals is selected, uh, it will replace that sum with an average. I'm going to click OK. And then I'm going to click the collapse, and now we have our average. Now let's go look at this. Subtotal is a function in Excel, and it's put in automatically when you do um, subtotal feature. This function is available in the spreadsheet when you're not using the subtotal feature, but this one uh, represents average. Nine is sum. Now I'm going to click Escape. If we come over to this um, sheet STPTC, these are the functions that uh, features like subtotal, pivot tables, and a few other features actually allow you to do. And so here's the, the numbers and the functions. But you don't really need to know them because if I go back to ST1, we can just use the subtotal feature and it automatically, uh, we use the dialog box and it automatically helps us select. All right, so now we have our average and then you can copy and paste. But now, how do you get the data set back to its original state? You go to Remove, and I'm going to go Alt-DB, and then Remove All. Now, I want to see how to do this with keyboard shortcuts. And this is something common when I do subtotals. I'm always doing the subtotals and then undoing it real quick with a keyboard. Once we get to here, we have to hit R. That little underline means if you 
you can use that for Alt keys. But now when I hit R, it went up here. I'm going to click Cancel. Something interesting about Alt keyboard shortcuts, we did Alt keyboard shortcuts and it got us up into a ribbon item, open this up. But once you get to this dialog box, you're actually going to have to hold Alt down again to get to that R. I'm going to click Escape. So I'm going to hold Alt down the whole way, Alt D B R. Just like that, our data set is restored. Now, we'd like to do uh, a third calculation. We'd like to actually look at the sales rep column. So before I do subtotal, I got to sort. So I'm going to click A to Z. And what I want to do is find out how many sales each sales rep had. Well, we can do that easily. We're going to count words. All right, now we need to open up our subtotal dialog box. I'm going to use the keyboard shortcut, Alt D B. All right, so at each change in, we're going to say, oh yeah, sales rep. Average, the function, that's not what we want. So I'm going to select the drop down. And something interesting, we have seen count, counts numbers, and count a uh, counts words, or non-empty cells, in subtotal and pivot table and a few other features that use these 11 functions. Count numbers is, a, is an option here. That's the equivalent to count. And then count in this uh, dialog box, again, 11 functions, counts non-empty cells. So that's the one we're going to use. And I'm not going to check these. I'm going to check sales rep. We don't need to worry about replace current subtotals. I'm going to click OK. I'm going to click the collapse. And just like that, there is the count for each sales rep. All right, I'm going to leave that there. And we're going to go do one last important subtotal trick. Let's go over to the sheet ST2. Now, in this example, we want to see how to add subtotals on two different columns. Now, um, we already saw how to do that where we had sum here. But what I'd really like is to have subtotals within subtotals. Now, we saw how to sort. So for example, back in the sort video, we saw we could sort this as the major sort. And then when we sorted this, the sales rep names would be sorted within region. We want to do subtotal. So east, we want a total for all the east. But then we want also a total for each sales rep in the east. All right, so this is going to involve doing two separate subtotals. Now, the way you do this is we, we saw how to sort. This is the major sort. So we have to sort this column. And then in this column, I'm going to use the buttons. So watch. I'm going to click A to Z. And then this is the major sort. I want all of the west or all the west together, all the east together. So I'm going to click this one second or last. Now we can see all the east. And then the chins, franks, etc., are sorted within the region. Now notice how we did this. I always get confused when I do subtotals, multiple subtotals like this. Um, sort, we had to go click here and then here. When we do our subtotals, we're actually going to have two steps. And I remember that you have to do it in reverse order. If I went this way using the sort buttons, I'm going to go backwards when I do my subtotal dialog box. That means I add the subtotal first to this one. And then I have to reopen the subtotal dialog box and add them to here. So you ready? I'm going to go up to subtotal. At each change in region, I'm going to do sum. And I'm going to do region. I'm sorry, not region. Um, I'm going to do just sales, not units or cost of goods sold. So it's only going to add a sum function for sales at each change in region. Replace current subtotals doesn't come into play here, but it will the second time we do this. I'm going to click OK. Now I can click uh, Collapse. And we saw this in our first example for subtotal. There are the subtotals. But now we want to add subtotals within subtotals. I'm going to uncollapse just to visually check real quick that I've sorted this, and I have. I'm going to go back up to subtotals, or Alt DB. And every time I do subtotals, the second one, I immediately go here first and just uncheck it, because I don't want to replace the ones that are always there, already there. I want to add a new one. But now I have to say each change in sales rep, sum, sales. So again, I did the major sort first in the subtotal dialog box, and then the sales rep subtotal second. 
Click OK. And now it's going to add a fourth one. And now we can collapse. I'm sorry, not four gives us all the data. Three gives us, oh, look at that. Here's the each total down at the bottom, and here's each individual total for each sales rep. Down here for Midwest, all right, and then you could uh, collapse it number two. That shows you just the totals there, and then, of course, one is the grand total. I'm going to keep it on three. Now, I want to take a look at this and think about what we did. We actually added with two criteria. And so far in this book, we've seen a few ways to do this. Uh, we've seen it with formulas. In our next video, when we do pivot tables, we'll see it with pivot tables. But that's exactly what we did. For this cell right here, the calculation is, please go through the entire data set. And every time you find a chin in the east, add all those uh, sales numbers up. Same with here. Two criteria, francs and east, in order to get this total. Now, this is a subtotal, and in my opinion, although occasionally I do them, I usually don't do subtotals, and the reason why is this same type of report is more easily done with a pivot table, right? Remember we said earlier, uh, in way back in the uh, data chapter, I think it was chapter three, we did a, a couple pivot tables, and we saw how easy it is, and we said, you know, pivot tables are easy. Nevertheless, why do I show you subtotals in this particular, in this book? Some people actually like subtotals, and so I have to show you, and occasionally people that take uh, tests, an Excel test for a job interview or something, they ask to do a subtotal. Still further, maybe your boss likes subtotals, so you have to know how to do it. All right, so there we did it here. Uh, two criteria adding. In our next video, we will start talking about pivot tables, and we'll see a, a, just a lot of different examples of amazing things we can do with pivot tables, but one of them will be exactly the same report, and we'll see that it's probably a little bit easier to use in pivot tables. All right. All right. After a lot of fun with sorting and subtotals, here's some homework. Here's our workbook, Slaying Excel Dragons, homework 1 to 9. I'm on the sheet, pages 308 to 340. Actually, it's not 308 to 340. It's 341 to 373. Homework's uh, problem 69 to 75. As always, there's a sheet with the actual homework problem, and then the answer, homework problem, and then the answer all the way to 75. All right, we'll see you next video for pivot tables.